Hello, welcome again to another SI session. Well, basically, this is just a quick video for SI class. And a couple of weeks ago, I'll just go real quick so we can get to the meat of this. A couple of weeks ago, we had a little quiz online about, and some of the questions asked about polarity of covalent bonds. And I'll have to confess, there's a question on that quiz that was wrongly worded, and that's a mistake on my part. But beyond that, let's go ahead and just review real quick the concept of polar covalent bonds and when the molecule is polar or not polar, and, uh, and that's what I mean by something non-polar overall. Now let's go over here real quick. I just went to Google really fast because I'm pretty sure there was so much information. I just googled polar covalent bonds and you can do this. I read through some of these websites as you can see, but the one that I really liked that was very simple for the level of this class and this is for biology 1441 so for the level of this class with basic terminology and it gets right straight to the point was this website and now if you cannot remember this website I would post the link of this website on our SI website and forum so you'll be able to get there real quick I don't even know the guy who put this website up but he did uh, or she uh, does a really good job at explaining polar and non-polar compounds. So basically we all know that polarity is based on the difference in electronegativities. If, an, uh, what a car, an, if a molecule like chlorine is more electronegative than, the, than hydrogen, it's going to pull more electrons. Also to add, like, polarity has a lot to do with stereo centers, um, the um, electronegativity, ionization energy of the molecule. So there are lots of things that go into, co into polarity within covalent bonds. But a polar covalent bond is when the electronegati electronegativities are greater. And there are numbers to this. Like you see here, 2.5 and there's 3. Usually there's, there's a, there has to be a big difference between the numbers. And I think, the, I think the difference is 2 or so. But you don't have to know that for this class. There's just some basic compounds like we said, chlorine oxygen, fluorine, nitrogen, just are highly electronegative compounds. But when two compounds like this, say for example HCl here, you see the hydrogen ends up having a partial positive charge because chlorine is drawing all the electron density, all the electron cloud. And uh, yeah, a nonpolar covalent bond is when two molecules, for example two chlorine molecules, could form a nonpolar bond so they share the electrons equally because they have the same electronegativities. Um, hydrogen could do it, but if you put hydrogen and chlorine, that would not form a nonpolar molecule. It would form a polar covalent bond. And a polar molecule, really, it's when uh, the dipoles do not cancel each other out evenly. So for example, let's see, molecular dipoles, this guy, he has it very simply, very straightforward, so I liked it. You look at um, carbon dioxide here real quick. Uh, CO2 is a linear molecule, it has two dipoles, excuse me, and you see here this oxygens are pulling electron density equally, so they're canceling other out, e each other out, canceling each other out. So this molecule, CO2, the way it is structured, it's a non-polar um, covalent bond here, the way it is structured. And if it is non-polar overall, it will not dissolve in a polar compound, um, in the polar solvent. Uh, HCN, you can see, and he, he has a good table here. And don't worry about trying to memorize this website. Like I said, you can just Google it, but I'll post the link to this website. I really liked it. And again, this is for non-commercial purposes, so it's just very educational. Uh, you can see here he has some molecules that are. It shows you how polar they are, and he has your polarity. You can see this is not polar. You can also see here this is not polar. You can see here this is not polar. This is tet tetrahedral, and he has the names here. NH3, you'd expect that to be polar. Nitrogen is pulling all the electron density to it. Oxygen is doing the same thing. So, yeah, um, 
read through this website um, the stereo chemistry here is very understandable I like it and on that note let me go back to that quiz we had a couple of weeks ago now this was question 5 the one I got a lot of questions for it says which of the following molecules is nonpolar overall now if you just look at this four options here or I guess including E this molecule is pulling electrons this way chlorine is pulling electrons this way this chlorine is pulling this way so this beryllium atom right here it's this beryllium atom right here everything is being cancelled out this chlorine is pulling just as good this way and this one is pulling just as good the other way so this molecule becomes nonpolar overall just kinda like our carbon dioxide here now this phosphate molecule, based on the way it is, it's nonpolar. However, in biology, you never see a phosphate molecule like this. Usually, when phosphorus has four oxygens around it, this is what it forms. It's a polar molecule with a two negative sign. You can see that here. So that is a, this is what you would really see. Um, however, for the sake of this question this guy cancels this guy this guy cancels this guy that is nonpolar but again like I said you never see a phosphate with four oxygens like this without a negative sign that's why they're really good for um, when they're when things are phosphorylated for energy in the cells ATP GTP CTP so those are, those make really good phosphorus is a really good way because of um, the way the foot these oxygens repel each other so they break off and they give off a lot of energy and we'll study that in the later chapter ethanol you guys know this is a polar molecule you look right here you see the oxygen pulling all the electron clouds here carbon is no match for it it cannot cancel it out the hydrogens cannot you know this is a polar molecule water it is a polar molecule so your best answer in this question based on a b c d the way they are is more than one is correct and that more than one that is correct is I'll go and put that A and B are the correct answers for that so I hope we all see how I got that Just hope that makes sense if it doesn't make sense replay this video post it on our forum ask questions so we're out here to help you now let's go to the next question I put this in red which of the following will dissolve in a hydrophilic solvent? I place this in red because of uh, that mistake. Now, this right here is nonpolar. We just discussed that. It is nonpolar. This, the way it is, P, um, this phosphate group right here, it is nonpolar. However, if this was the molecule, the way it is, right, the way it is always, with a OPO3 2 minus. This is a very polar and unstable molecule. However, right here, what we have for B, this is nonpolar. So this would not dissolve in a hydrophilic solvent. This guy would not dissolve in a hydrophilic solvent. Al alcohol definitely will dissolve. Glucose is polar with a hydroxyl group right here, definitely will dissolve. So the problem with question number six is the answer choices it says all of the above but that is wrong so this is a mistake on my part and so I'll go ahead and correct that I could say more than one is correct or C and D those are the correct answers C and D are the correct answers for this so this is just a short little video on polarity. Um, feel free to please send me questions. I even notice I didn't use the words dipole moment and non-dipole moment because we haven't done that in our class. You can read about it. It is online. Uh, if you go back to that website that we were on right here, um, talk about dipole moments, and you can go back on Google. You can a lot of these websites. There's lots of good stuff. But again, if you have any questions, just email me. Hopefully this video is uh, productive and will help you in your studies. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.